So the process of transcription involve also a DNA molecule sama macam process replication. So both process involve DNA molecules. However, untuk transcription, the process will start at a specific base sequence on the DNA known as promoter. Kalau replication tadi, the start signal adalah origin. Tapi for transcription, the start signal will be promoter sequence. Next, the sequence of DNA involved in process transcription bukan sahaja ada start signal iaitu promoter, tetapi ada juga stop signal. So, yang kalau merah ni merujuk kepada stop signal known as terminator sequence. So, in transcription, the DNA molecule involved ada start iaitu promoter dan juga ada stop iaitu terminator. Kalau replication tadi cuma ada start sahaja which is the origin but there is no stop signal ataupun stop sequence. Tak ada. Tapi transcription ada. So, the DNA bases found between the promoter and the terminator sequence. So, these are the DNA segment that we say contain genes. So, tak kisahlah gene apa pun. So, previously dalam chapter 4, awak ada belajar banyak gene for flower color, for eye color, for hair, hair color. So, semua gene tersebut akan kita jumpa dekat dalam specific basis sequence of a DNA that can be found between a promoter and a terminator. So, tengah-tengah ni lah kita akan jumpa base sequence yang contain a gene. So basically, the process of transcription, apa kita punya main objective is to copy the gene sequence. Sebab the gene sequence ni lah yang kita perlukan untuk membuat protein. Next, for the process of transcription, an enzyme RNA polymerase will recognize the promoter sequence. So what will happen is RNA polymerase once it recognizes the promoter, it will bind to the promoter and then starts to unwind and unzip the DNA strand to form two single-stranded DNA. So, process ini sama macam apa yang DNA helikis buat dekat origin of replication. Cuma, in that process, the enzyme is helikis. But for transcription, the enzyme is RNA polymerase. So when RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, it will start to unwind and unzip the DNA molecule to form two single-stranded DNA. At the same time, apabila enzyme tu sedang unwind dan juga unzip the DNA molecule, apa yang dia juga buat adalah it will start to synthesize new RNA strand complementary to the DNA. Tetapi only one of the DNA strand will be read. Salah satu sahaja yang akan dibaca oleh RNA polymerase enzyme to make the complementary new RNA strand from 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Ingat, sama sahaja macam replication, asalkan proses itu melibatkan sintesis always involve from 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So, kalau sintesis daripada 5 ke 3, maksudnya the enzyme must read the DNA strand from 3 to 5' prime direction. So, out of these two strand of single stranded of single-stranded DNA. So, enzyme RNA polymerase akan baca yang arahnya adalah 3 ke 5. So, strand yang bawah ni arahnya 5 ke 3. So, enzyme ini tak boleh baca yang bawah. So, dia terpaksa baca yang atas. Sebab atas ni yang direction ni adalah 3 ke 5. So, sebelah sini adalah 5. So, means that when when this enzyme RNA polymerase nampak A, dia akan pergi letak U, uracil. 
And then nampak T timing dia akan letak adenin. Nampak T letak adenin, nampak C letak guanin, so on and so forth. Yang penting bila nampak A dia akan letak U sebab RNA polymerase synthesize RNA bukannya DNA. Sebelum ni untuk DNA polymerase bila dia nampak A dia letak timing. Sebab DNA polymerase adalah untuk synthesize DNA strand. RNA polymerase untuk synthesize RNA strand. So the process of synthesizing new RNA strand will still occur from 5 prime to 3 prime direction by the enzyme RNA polymerase. So in this case, yang kita nampak, out of the two single stranded DNA, only one of the single stranded DNA will be used by the RNA polymerase to synthesize the complementary RNA strand. Salah satu sahaja yang akan dibaca, bukannya dua-dua yang dibaca. So, the DNA strand yang dibaca oleh RNA polymerase untuk membuat complementary RNA. So, strand inilah kita panggil sebagai template. So, this means that in transcription, out of the two DNA strand, only one will act bertindak sebagai template. So, the other strand of DNA yang tidak dibaca, ini yang kita panggil sebagai non-template. Sometimes, non-template is being referred to as the coding sequence. Kalau template pula, sometimes it is being referred to as the non-coding sequence. So, this is one of the major differences Kalau kita nak compare the process of transcription dan juga the process of DNA replication. So next, the enzyme RNA polymerase will continue to read the next base sequence towards the terminator. So sekarang kita nampak enzyme RNA polymerase Sudah so continue to synthesize the complementary RNA strand from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Bermula daripada promoter tadi sampailah sekarang dia sudah sampai dekat terminator. Satu lagi yang kita boleh nampak adalah DNA strand yang separated tadi sekarang sudah form complementary base pairing semula. So, tadi dia separated into single-stranded DNA, sekarang dia sudah bercantum balik, menjadi double helix. So, kesannya, RNA molecule yang pairing with the template strand tadi akan kena tolak keluar. So, this is the mRNA yang sudah separated from the template strand. So, template dengan non-template akan bercantum semula dan form double helix. Kalau dia replication, once the DNA strand separated, dia akan separated permanently. Tetapi untuk transcription, the separated DNA strand will rejoin, reform complementary base pairing and form the double helix semula. So now we have a single stranded RNA molecule known as mRNA that was synthesized by the RNA polymerase from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So this is the product of transcription, yaitu mRNA. So the mRNA sequence is single-stranded. So M stands for messenger RNA. So this is the first type of RNA yang awak pernah tengok sebelum ni, yaitu mRNA. So, DNA sequence tadi akan completely rejoin semula and reform the double helix. Now, we have the mRNA as the product of transcription. Next, this mRNA molecule needs to be transported from the nucleoplasm into the cytoplasm. 
Ingat, the process of transcription and replication both occur inside the nucleoplasm, inside the nucleus. Okay, so the mRNA produced from transcription needs to be transported from the nucleus into the cytoplasm so that the mRNA can be used in another process which is translation. Before the transportation can occur, we need to add something to the mRNA so that the mRNA can know that it needs to move into the cytoplasm. The process of modifying the structure of mRNA is known as RNA processing. So during RNA processing, what will happen is a protein known as 5' cap will be added to the 5' end of the mRNA. So the cap 5' hujung 5' tambah protein bernama 5' cap. So at the other end of the mRNA, yaitu at the 3 prime end of the mRNA, akan ditambah many sequence of adenine. So tambah adenine, 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 adenine. So tak kisahlah seberapa banyak adenine pun. So this is known as poly, so banyak poly A. Apa yang banyak, adenine yang banyak. So this is known as the tail. Tadi tambah cap sebagai kepala dia dan juga tambah tail. So once the process of RNA processing completed, now the mRNA can move out of the nucleoplasm into the cytoplasm. Inside the cytoplasm, barulah the mRNA will be involved in translation to make protein. So that is all for transcription.